This place is a reclaiming of disused urban land to make it an urban farm to produce fruit and vegetables to feed people, to teach people how to feed themselves and to bring together community. Our neighborhood does spend a lot of money on food that often goes to waste and generates a lot of waste. We also spend a lot of money supporting a food system that doesn't always serve all residents of Cape Town fairly. Then you have the big food producers who um, are, have the benefits of economy of scale and who bring prices down, but they increase the control and they decide who grows what, when they grow it, when it's harvested, what the price point is, and they introduce a level of, um, of uh, fragility um, to the whole system. So we're missing the middle ground where you have smaller growers, more responsive to the seasons, more responsive to their community, who can help bridge that for people who grow for themselves, but who might not have access to a big grocery store or might not want what's available there or, or for whatever reason that doesn't work for them. You know, for our neighbors here, they can shop at a, at a um, store that has beautifully presented you know, food that is packaged nicely and flown in from around the world. And, if they purchase those things, those choices have effects for a whole range of consumers. It's all about convenience. Into the supermarket, grab it off the shelf. And I, and I think that uh, therefore, therefore these, these chains grow. Um, you know, and, and, and at the end of the day, you tie, you, you tie yourself into that system and it's uh, difficult to get out of. So a group of people got together and decided why not restore the old bowling green or cre transform rather the old bowling green into a bowl of greens and create a farm to resemble what was once here before Rangers got divided up in 1901 into a residential suburb with different earths. The market is has been a fantastic development for us and one we aspired to do but it kind of emerged on its own organically from the project. One of the early supporters of the project was a farm that produces organic compost and the soil that we had was terrible because as a bowling green it had been poisoned and fertilized and so on for decades. So they were bringing in organic compost, donating it, but they also grow organic grapes. So they had excess and the farmer brought some, some grapes to sell and the volunteers loved it and they bought a bit of that. Then there was another person who worked at a university farm, kind of an agriculture school, and their garden had a bit of excess. And gradually other people would come and bring and there was some demand. So we said, look, people are planting, they want to harvest, they want to buy. So we started selling a cup of coffee and a bit of this and it just kind of grew. There are questions that are puzzling us in the community and these questions we are trying to answer in a very tiny way about what's possible when you get a community mobilized and excited about the possibility of growing their own food. People are changing their outlook. They are coming here and they're saying, oh, I'm cutting that out, I'm not buying that at the supermarket any longer. I'm coming here every Saturday or during the week and I'm going to get my salad or my rocket or whatever it is. And, and that's been you know, incredible for me because I'm essentially not a community person. I'm kind of a loner. I like to go and do my surfing and, do the, and spend time on my own and grow vegetables on my own. And I'm speaking to people now. Um, from the community, which I would never have spoken to before. I might have grunted to them, but now I've got to know all my neighbors. Then they're saying, ah, I can bring my garden refuse and my kitchen leftovers here to turn into compost and I can get good food in exchange. We've continued to um, grow the number of residents and others who are involved. So some people are keen to come out and plant or weed or harvest or whatever to support the, the project. Others might want to be involved in educational projects who are teachers or otherwise want to do that. But some people just come out and they have a cup of coffee and they use the free Wi-Fi and they're appreciative of the market, even if they don't really care about farming or, or that sort of thing. Myself, I'm not afraid of challenges and I'm not afraid to go and get what I want. But it, uh, this farm has increased more of my value and has made me realize how good am I networking with people and talking to people and expressing my views. And that's what I love about this farm. Every day you meet new people and you have to talk. And then by talking like that, it's where you get mot is motivating you and it's giving you a challenge and that's what I want. The starting point is education, to be aware that these issues are out there and to be aware of what your choices are. 
everybody eats, everybody relates to food. It's a unifying factor. So if food is our life-giving force, then surely we should understand much more about where we're getting it from. In life, whatever you want, you're going to get it. You might get it tomorrow, after five weeks, in two minutes after you needed it. But I'm telling you, if you're passionate enough, you might get it after 10 years. But if you tell yourself and you tell Mother Earth, Mother Nature, that I want this, and you say it with your mouth, you're going to get it. So I think that's a personal touch that I put in into the chocolate, and that makes it very special about the fact where chocolate is mass produced Again, and this huge machinery. Butter and doesn't give her any flavor. Running an oven like our one, the classic uh, Italian pizza.